Hello everyone. When students are about to start a PhD, they are faced with a number of important and confusing questions. Questions surrounding the issues of selecting and giving precedence to the research supervisor or the institute or the research topic. Now these questions can take on a multitude of forms. And in an earlier video, I had addressed the important question of whether one should go with a new young faculty as one's research supervisor or a senior more established professor. And in this video, I'm going to address the very important question of whether one should give precedence to the research topic or the research supervisor. Now, if you do not have the time or the patience to go through the entire video, the quick answer is that always, always go with the research supervisor, give precedence to the research supervisor over the research topic. But if you want a more nuanced answer with proper justification, listen on. So if you think that you have a favorite research topic, what is the basis of that thought? Why do you think that you have this favorite research topic? Is it perhaps because that you did your bachelor's project or your master's project in that topic? Because if so, do understand that your bachelor's project or your master's project is more of a gateway for you to understand the research methodology, how to do the literature survey, how to write up a report, how to carry out simulations and experiments, how to interact with others in the research group. So these are some of the basic things, the mechanics of research which you are supposed to be getting familiar with as part of your bachelor's and master's projects. So that is much more important. Those things are much more important than the actual research topic. Furthermore, do also note that what, is, what was it that prompted you to take up this master's project or a bachelor's project? Okay, why, why did you start working on that topic? Were, were you perhaps guided by your own interest in that topic? Or perhaps it just so happened that due to some administrative decision in the department, you got randomly allocated to a professor because he happened to be free? Or perhaps it was just uh, on the basis of your role number? Because if that is the case, then just think for a moment, will you let that random chance dictate the rest of your research life? Now let us say for argument's sake that there was no such accidental random allocation for your master's project and that you did approach a professor out of your own interest and you actually did the work uh, on a particular topic out of your own interest and it is based on that kind of a background that you want to do your PhD on that very same topic. And now perhaps you are thinking that you have already invested at least a year or perhaps even more uh, as part of your master's project on that topic and you do not want to let that experience, that time investment, investment of energy go to waste. But very important to note here is that compared to master's project, a PhD is a much, much bigger uh, commitment. In fact, there is no comparison. Okay, it's a much bigger commitment. It's a much longer commitment. And then when I say longer, I do not just mean long in the sense that a PhD journey is of a duration of four or five years. I mean it in the sense that when you do a PhD with a particular supervisor, it is a lifelong relationship. Okay, it's a lifelong journey actually. So having a great supervisor is of utmost necessity. In fact, as I had already mentioned earlier, it is much, much more important than your actual research topic. Because even in your PhD, your supervisor may be teaching you a few things, especially initially uh, on the particular research topic, but much more importantly than that, he would be teaching you some of the actual uh, ropes of the trade. What I mean by that is he would be teaching you how to actually do research and that teaching is absolutely irrespective of the kind of topic that you are working on. He would also be teaching you how to actually write papers, uh, how, to, uh, how to find an appropriate research question. So these are the kind of skills which are completely independent of the research topic. So if you have a great supervisor who can actually mentor and guide you 
in these very very fundamental skills okay very ground level skills which are absolutely necessary in, in any kind of research in any topic that you may be doing in the future then that will be a real real value addition much more than the, the spoon feeding kind of um, of guidance that you may be expecting and in fact that is not going to happen also furthermore note that especially in india your relationship with the supervisor is going to uh, as i had already mentioned it is going to sp uh, span out your entire life so uh, in many kinds of uh, for many kinds of recommendations you'll always have to come back to your phd supervisor absolutely essentially okay so it is especially important that you can work with such a supervisor with whom you can develop a good healthy relationship uh, that will benefit you in your, in your entire life because do understand that if you do stay in academia then in all likelihood you would not actually be working in the exact same topic that you would be working in your phd later on you would be deviating from that you would be opening up new research areas as as, a, as an independent uh, uh, academician and then your research supervisor will have nothing to say on on those topics okay so uh, but despite that his recommendation uh, his connections will matter to you okay so my personal advice is that always always give precedence to the research supervisor try if you get an opportunity to work with a great supervisor even if it means that you have to sacrifice so to speak sacrifice your your research interest from your master's project days do so start working on the new area and logically just think you have invested just one or two years of time at most during your master's project on that research topic now when you start working on your phd the topic which seems new now when you are about to start your phd after just one or two years it will no longer be new in fact i guarantee you this that after one or two years the amount of knowledge and experience that will have in this so called new topic will be much more than the top, than the knowledge and experience that you have uh, on your masters project research topic okay so this is something that you must must um, understand another important point is that when you are starting your now when you are about to start your phd you should be open to the possibility of uh, of trying out or or starting your work in a new and exciting research area okay because it may have so happened that in the place that where you did your masters project uh, maybe that area was uh, was not an active area of research it, it maybe no professor was there who was working on that and perhaps if they were there you would have ended up working uh, in that area itself so now that you are getting a chance to work on such a new and exciting area why not go for it it will stand you in good stead in the future uh, now you may think that uh, okay you are perhaps open to this uh, idea of working in a new area but what will the professor probably think about it that you do not have any prior experience believe me on this if your fundamentals are strong okay if your fundamentals are strong then most professors will be very happy to take you as their phd student irrespective of the fact whether you have prior experience on that it's a certainly a bonus if you have that prior experience but it will not be a tremendously negative thing uh, so you don't have to worry on that account okay and please note that suppose suppose you have some experience like you are you are going to work in an area uh, which in which you have already worked during your masters even then your supervisor will be somewhat circumspect about the in depth knowledge that you would be having okay so he will anyway have to train you once you start your phd on those on that topic properly again okay one final point to note here is that suppose you are you have become really really interested uh, in your masters topic okay so my question to you is why don't you consider actually continuing with that professor okay why go to a different institute why go to a different professor now you may be thinking that okay you want to go to some big university big place uh, but i think it's a it's it's a wrong notion okay if you are actually enjoying working in a particular area probably more than the area what you are actually enjoying is actually enjoying with your masters project supervisor 
So try to think very honestly about this point. So if you have a nice communication with your master's project supervisor and there is a possibility that um, that you may continue to work with him for your PhD, I suggest strongly suggest that you consider doing so. And this is particularly true if you see that there is some kind of a possibility of a publication from your master's work. Okay, because that will give you a head start uh, in the absolutely essential requirement of having proper publications in your PhD. So if you go into your PhD into your PhD program with the with the with the uh, with that inertia with that momentum of actually uh, going for a publication right from the very start based on the work that you have been doing with the same supervisor in your masters then nothing like it. Okay. So with these very general tips I will conclude the video and I wish you all the very best in taking the correct decision which is unique to you. All the very best.